Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, February 13th, 2012. Our top story is exciting news from the world of biochemistry. A research team led by the University of Tennessee has made a breakthrough in biosolar power generation. Conventional solar power uses photovoltaic cells, which certainly produce clean power from the sun, but the production of the actual solar panels generally involves toxic chemicals. This is where biosolar has the advantage because it's essentially taking a component used in photosynthesis from organisms. Nanotubes of zinc oxide acting as the semiconductor are engineered to attract these complexes that then generate electrons when exposed to light. Not only is this system non-toxic and renewable, but it's actually quite simple and self-assembling. More development is obviously needed, but the researchers are confident that it could become an efficient and sustainable source of power. We now turn to the world of biology. Thanks to a discovery made by Yale University, the material polyurethane may be able to become biodegradable. As you're probably aware, polyurethane is a synthetic polymer, aka plastic, that comes in a variety of forms and is used in an extremely wide variety of applications. Like a lot of plastics, it has desirable pro physical properties, and also like most plastics, it cannot be broken down by microorganisms or chemically decompose. Oh, did we say organ organisms couldn't break polyurethane down? Well, that's a lie. Thanks to a fungus recently discovered in a Yale expedition. Now, this fungus normally lives inside the tissue of plants, but studies showed it could survive on a diet of nothing but polyurethane. And the scientists found an enzyme that they think allows it to metabolize the polyurethane, even in environments without oxygen. Although not explicitly stated in the article, it's reasonable to assume this has practical applications in safely disposing of polyurethane products, either using this fungus directly or perhaps a bacteria genetically engineered to mimic it. Our final story is an update from the world of microscopy. German scientists have, for the first time, observed neurons in a living brain, a mouse brain as you may have guessed. This is thanks to developments in stimulated emission depletion, or STED microscopes. Now, this is very important, because we can only learn so much by analyzing dead brain cells, or small cultures of them. So, what they did was replace a portion of the mouse's skull with glass, put the new microscope up to it, and observed neurons on the brain surface. Despite these images being of unprecedented resolution, enough to see the movement of synapses, they're already working on improvements. Still, this will give us new insight into neuroscience. Of particular interest is directly observing the effects of certain drugs. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description. And look out for a video on Wednesday with a very exciting announcement.